going on everybody? Welcome to yet another OpenCV with Python tutorial. This tutorial is going to be building off the last couple tutorials. Uh, all working together for us to create our very own horror cascades for object detection of literally any object. So uh, what we did in the last tutorial is we downloaded a bunch of these negative images. Again, you should have downloaded from the first link, changed pick num to be whatever that number after uh, that first link was change that the link in here pull the new link run that again and you should have a large ish file of negative images mine has currently 1968 files and so you should be somewhere around there and you should probably note that you have images that look like this uh, so this is from Flickr, and what I was bringing up before is just this stupid little image that they give you when the image doesn't exist anymore. And I think this is so, like, if someone embeds an image on a website, it doesn't, like, show a broken image link. It'll just show this stupid image. And um, so we end up with that image. Now, these are negatives, so, I mean, in theory, it doesn't matter, right? This is an image, not of our object. So, I mean, it's okay, I suppose. <laughs> but... We're going to go ahead and talk about how to get rid of these images because while these are negatives, what if what if you did go to pull positive images and you got this junk? Okay, so getting rid of these actually isn't too bad. So just find one of them, copy it. So Control C or right click copy or whatever. Come to your uh, main directory and I'm going to make a new directory and call it uglies. Go into it and paste that image. Note the size, make sure the dimensions are identical. So if you pulled 50 by 50 positive images, um, you'll need a 50 by 50 version of this picture too, or something like that, but just take that into consideration. So that really is the only one. There's another one that you might see, but that's the only one I saw right now. So anyways, um, times might change in that, you know, it might look different or you might get other ones. So we'll go back to our uh, script here. We'll comment out the running of this function and we'll make a new function. And this one is gonna be called find uglies. So define find underscore uglies. And what we're gonna say is for file type in, um, for now the list will just be negative, but if you had positives, you could put pause in there as well. Um, then we're gonna say for image in os.listdir file type. So this is going to start iterating through all the images in that negative directory. Where's my mouse? There it is. Um, so it's going to start going through all of those. Then we're going to say for ugly in os.listdir uglies. Now, of course, again, like I said, you might have like a pause version of uglies and neg version of uglies, but you know, you're going to have maybe four <laughs> total ugly images. So iterating through them is not going to matter. You're going to go through this super fast. Um, so for ugly in those uglies, what do we want to do? We want to try and then accept exceptions e, just in case we're going to try, uh, we're going to say the current image path that we're working with is equal to the string of the file type. Uh, so this will be, so the file type is the directory path, right? So string file type plus slash plus string image. So it's like the image name. So that gets the current image. Then we're gonna load in that ugly. So ugly equals cv2.imread uh, and we're reading in the path of uglies slash plus the string of the ugly name which we're getting from here. So this is our current image path, and this is our current ugly image, but we don't have the current image yet. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this question. This is our question image, is cv2.imread, and then we're just gonna read in that current image path. And then we're gonna ask, are these two images the same image? Gosh, if only we were doing something that we knew how to do that. Oh, right, open CV. So if ugly.shape is the same as question.shape, so basically, are, are these images the exact same dimensions? Cool. And not, and then we're going to say np.bitwise underscore xor. I just found out I lied to you guys uh, in a few few videos ago, and I'll explain why. xor, uh, ugly question, and then dot any. 
So if this is the case, these are identical images. I will explain that line in just a moment. Print. Damn, girl. You ugly. <laughs> you gully. <laughs> you ugly. Now we're going to uh, os.remove uh, that current image path. And let's go ahead and print the image path just just like so if it starts deleting like all the images <laughs> we can uh, we can hopefully stop that from occurring okay so what's happening here this you should understand it's just are the dimension are these the same size image easy enough now originally I told you guys about these bitwise operations I said you know there's bitwise not and or and X or and I told you or and and not are just like pythons or and and not now, XOR is a special type where it is either one or the other, not both. So in Python, if we say if one or two, or if X equals one or X equals two, X could equal one and equal two. I should have used a different method because that's false. <laughs> but let's say, let's say X is, you know, 15. And then we said if X is greater than 10 or X is greater than five, do something that would be that would that statement would ring true and we would run but with x or that would not run because x or is one or the other not both so in this case we're asking that it is not the case that these two images like basically an x or operation it's one or the other this just simply not true everything is identical in these images therefore this is going to run and we're going to remove that image i told you guys we probably would never use x or um, in this tutorial, but here we are. So, <laughs> sorry guys. Anyway, so we remove that image. We find the uglies. Cool. So let's run this function real quick and hopefully delete some uglies. Whoops. Try to move it over. There it is. So it deleted them. Awesome. So now that we're hopefully hydrated now that we're hopefully we've got all of the images that are decent images what we now need to do is actually create uh the the description files now um if you're using the create samples where you just need like one positive image and then we're going to use opencv to create all our images if you're just doing that that create samples function is actually going to create your positive images description file which is very kind of them because that's uh, the most annoying one to create, but it does not create your negative images file. I wish it did, but it does not. So uh, we need to create something, a, a, a script that is going to do that for us. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll make some space. We'll come up here. And now we're going to define create pause and neg. And then basically we're going to say for file underscore type um, and, and for now, we're going to say we're just going to use neg again, but you can append pause to that and have a field day. For that, we're going to say for image in os.listdir file type. Uh, if file underscore type equals neg, that's the directory we're working with. We're going to say the line equals uh, file type plus slash uh, plus image plus a new line. So in the negative file, that's all we have. And then we just need to uh, write that. So we're going to with open, uh, with open bg.txt with the intention to append as f, we're going to f dot write that line. And that's that. So with the, with the negative image, you know, file, it's just literally the paths of these negative images. So when we run it with OpenCV, OpenCV just knows where to find the negative images. But then just in case, um, I'm going to put the positive one in here. I'm just going to copy it from the text based version though. We're not going to write it out. Um, but you'll see the difference here. So we'd probably put L if here and L if file type equals positive. The line in this case would be the file type. So positive slash the image path and then space how many objects are in that image and then the rectangle location of the object. In our case, where we would hope that all objects were, let's say 50 by 50. And so they took up the entire image. So this would say, hi, it's the whole image. And then we make a new line and do the next one. But again, we're not actually going to be using this, this one anyways, because uh, we're going to use create samples. And like I said before, you might even be better off taking just multiple pictures of the same object that you want to track. 
uh, and then use create samples that way. And so you might have like five starting images, you end up with 10,000 testing images. Um, but if you wanted to detect like all watches, like we're only gonna be able to detect my watch. So if you wanna detect all the watches, you have to pull a bunch of watches from ImageNet, hand say where they're located and all that. I mean, it would be a pain in the tuchus. Or you could pull them, crop them. Like I said before, OpenCV can find circles. So you can find them and do crazy stuff like that and find all watches, I suppose. Anyway, moving along, um, that's what you would do. But we're just doing the negatives anyway. So let's run this function. Copy that, paste, create pulls and neg. Make sure the other one isn't running still. Cool. So we'll run that and we should wind up with a file. Sure enough, we do, bg.txt. Let's click on that. And here we have, just it just runs through all the files. Not necessarily in perfect order, but that really does not matter. So uh, we'll close this and close out of there. Now, what we need to do is we need to upload our negative images in bg.txt. This file and this file need to be uploaded to our server. So let me go into OpenCV Workspace and I already have two up there. Uh, we don't want those two, we want these two up there. So just go ahead and take these, the ones that you just created and uh, upload them. And uh, just make sure that's in your OpenCV workspace. Once they're up there, uh, you'll be ready to carry on in the next tutorial. So in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about um, creating the samples, creating the cascade, training the cascade, and then actually using the cascade and seeing if it actually worked. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we'll be doing in the next tutorial. Just click and drag these up to your server, copy and paste those. It'll probably take, I don't know, 10 minutes or something to move them to your server. And then you'll be ready to carry on in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. And until next time.